Hey, Ray from LoveYourRV.com here once again. There's Big Baby Blue. I just finished waxing her all up, getting her all in shape. Um, planning on heading south in about a month or so, so I'm getting things together. Um, the rig's still in storage yards, so I thought what I'd do right now is maybe go back and uh, do a review of all the upgrades I've done. You know, a lot of people on YouTube show all these upgrades and stuff, but I thought I'd, I'd come back and show you what what it's what I think of the things after using them a year or two see if I have any regrets for what I bought or what I like about it or what I found bad about it so um, yeah let's go in and I'll go through you know a bunch of different upgrades that you've seen if you follow my videos and, and let you know how they turned out and let me quickly go through a few of the the reno things from last year if you were following me last summer I did a major renovation built this day bed um, we tossed out the old furniture in the back end and built that little desk for myself. We added computer chairs and bought a nice leather chair. And we installed this uh, luxury vinyl flooring from Infinity. It's usually used on boats, but that stuff's turned out really well. I really like that, especially with the dog. I did a post on that after using it all uh, all winter. See, we used to have carpet here, and the, the dog hair would just get stuck right into it, whereas this stuff, it just comes right off. So I'm super happy with that. It's really durable. Um, Anne's been rolling this computer chair on it for uh, months and months and months, and uh, it hasn't caused any, any problems with it. And it's really good for the slides. So yeah, thumbs up for that. I know it's not the cheapest stuff. I've kind of priced it out. Oh, there goes the door. And uh, I think the amount of stuff we got might be worth 800 or 1000 bucks. Like I say, I got it free for the review, but I really like it. Good stuff. Worked great on the stairs, so super happy with that part of it. Um, one thing I did, I don't know if I showed anybody, we have this trap door on the, on the Cougar, and you used to have to just hold it up, and of course it would fall on your head when you're getting laundry baskets, so... I added a little piston over there so it stays up. Got a little shock absorber there. Okay, next let's have a look at uh, the Fantastic Fan. So uh, I believe I got that two years ago, or a year and a half. Anyway, it's performed well. It's great at uh, getting rid of the, the hot warm air in here. Nice one cooling off the rig. Also, I like it because it's right above the stove and I can really uh, get rid of the cooking odors quick. Also, it's great for expelling moisture. Uh, right, it also has one feature I like is the temperature control. I can use that when the dog's in here so that I make sure the fan comes on and gets a nice breeze for when we're away. And also, like now for instance, it's in storage. And since I have a solar, I have lots of energy, so I, I leave the fan on with that temperature control. So when it gets all hot and uh, muggy during the day, that fan will come on and like it is now and, uh, and kind of get some uh, ventilation in here. Uh, two things that, uh, that I didn't like. Um, one, I don't hear it now, but it seemed like when we were down in the desert, I don't know if some dust got into it, but it... It got an annoying, annoying squeak in that uh, bearing up there. This was going, sometimes going, ear, ear, ear. and not when it's on like that. It was when uh, it was off, but the wind would just blow it ever so slightly, and I'd get a little ear, 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 and just drive me crazy. Uh, uh, the other thing is where it's mounted here. Okay, I'm. I can reach it, okay? I'm on my tippy toes now and I can reach the controls, but it is kind of annoying and my wife definitely needs a step stool. So I think if I had to do it again, I would have bit the bullet and got the extra, uh, the, the extra deluxe one with the remote control, especially for this. I, in the bedroom I can easily reach it, but I would have done it for this fan for sure. So there we go. Fantastic fan. We've had our uh, big buddy heater for a few years now. I uh, can't say it's had any any problems. It's kept us toasty warm when we're uh, camping in, in cool weather. Um, you can sort of, I don't know if you can see the the one panel there is quite a bit darker than the other one. Um, 
I rarely need to use the, the, the two panels. That's just way too much heat. Maybe if it was minus 15 out or something, but even when it's freezing or a little bit below freezing, the one panel is sufficient, either on low or medium heat. Um, one thing that I really like is when I plumbed in to the low pressure RV line, that was great. It makes hookup really easy and quick. So we save a lot of propane with that. Um, it's nice and quiet. I guess the only drawback is uh, some people worry about the safety. Um, you know, it's it's an open flame and and you're burning something, so you're you're depleting your oxygen. But I always make sure to have all all three of my roof vents wide open, and right near it, I'll crack a window halfway. And even if it's cold out, the the heater puts out more than enough. And also we don't we don't sleep with it. We use the regular RV furnace for that. But in its price range, it's like 125 to 150 dollar range. It's it's a pretty good bargain. Um, I think if I if I could, I'd go further. Some that are you know six seven hundred ventless ventless um, heaters that are meant for for plumbing in. I might plumb it in somewhere and use that. But for uh, what it does now, it's it's good. I like the buddy. LED is one of my first uh, boondocking upgrades. Uh, great replacement over the bulbs. So I installed a company called Starlights. Um, so I'm uh, pushing two, two and a half years now with these and so far haven't had a lick of trouble. Uh, the, the, I haven't had any of the little LED sections burn out on any of them. Um, they've worked great. Uh, they have good built-in regulation, I guess, so, uh, you know, when my batteries are charging, there's no difference in light. It'll regulate from 8 volts to 30 volts, I believe, so that's nice. And they're uh, plenty bright enough, and they have a, a pretty good light. You know, not quite as rosy as incandescent, but uh, not as harsh as a lot of the cheaper uh, LED bulbs go, so... And also, I at the same time, I replaced all the marker lights on the trailer, and they've been really good. Uh, a lot brighter than incandescent, so that's great when you're in the fog and stuff like that. So the only negative I have for these is they're pretty costly. I think they're still just, if you just buy one, they're like 12 or $16 each. So um, if I had to get them go again, I got these for free. If I had to, I'd probably still go with the same brand. I just wouldn't have as many. I'd probably go with four or five and just the major lights we use because a lot of times when we're boondocking we're not using all the different lights there's usually four or five core lights that we always use another very early upgrade was to to swap out the old slider thermostat that was in here at a manual slider and it also had a temperature differential of about two degrees either way so say you set it for 70 it would come on at 68 and turn off at 72 which is quite the swing especially at night you'd be too cold and too hot so um, I went with this digital one it had a one degree separation plus you could set it exactly with the slider you were just kind of like going wherever you want wherever the slider was and sometimes you wouldn't get it that precise so I've really liked this um, this is the hunter they've they no longer are in business or this brand isn't uh, there's another one avail available um, on the on the on my uh, my uh, review. You'll find that I forget what the the name is, but it's basically identical to this, just a different name. But I am looking at upgrading this one to one that that will automatically switch from cold to hot. See this one, I we always have to switch between cooling and heating, so. Sometimes of the year, especially when we're down in the desert, it can get, you know, 80 degrees during the day and you have to run AC, but then at night it plunges down into the, the low temp, so you need heating, so it's kind of a pain to keep setting it back and forth, so I'm kind of on the hunt. Um, I had one of my readers email me one, I think it was from Honeywell, that should do the trick, so stay tuned for that. Let's switch to a few plumbing upgrades. One of the first things I got for the rig was this uh, water pressure regulator. See, it's got a nice dial on it, um, made of brass. It's relatively inexpensive. Uh, I think it was around somewhere around $75. I've seen them as low as $50. 
Um, one nice thing about it, it's got an adjuster screw on the top. I find it kind of fiddly though, I don't know. I kind of have to play with it to get a good adjustment. But once I've got it set, I got it set for around 55 PSI in the rig, which gives us decent decent pressure which without hurting the pipes. But I'm really glad I got this. I've been some really high pressure lines. You know, when we're in the desert and they're on wells and stuff, they're, they're wimpy lines, but you know, I come back here to the near the coast and we have really uh, we have water up in reservoirs, so a lot of downhill, a lot of high pressure lines. One park I spend the summer at, they use the same lines as their irrigation system. And I swear it's about 110 PSI. I've seen hoses blow out. I heard about a guy, he had a brand new rig and his whole all his plumbing burst while they were away and started filling the rig full of water. He was not a happy camper, so I, I advise everybody to have some sort of pressure regulator. And if you're using a cheap one and not getting good flow, get a more expensive one. Because the it'll the pressure will be the same, but the flow will be a lot better. You get decent flow through. Another upgrade from last year that I'm really happy with is I I replaced the water pump. I don't know what the camera picks it up, but it's a lot quieter than it was with the the original flow jet that was in there. Um, when I replaced it, I kind of made a little cabinet and stuff. That was also when I uh, installed the the winterizing kit. So I've added a bunch of uh, piping and looped it around so that it's not vibrating like crazy anymore. And uh, I installed a, it's called a Sure Flow. And instead of like the flow jet that was in there, this one has four chambers in the pump section. There's two at the top and two at the bottom. So that makes it a lot quieter compared to the flow jet and the way they had the, 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 the piping going. I know it looks like spaghetti in there, but kind of stuck where they put it. I don't have a lot of room. Um, in the future, I might get what they call an accumulator tank. I might have room for a little one in there. And that'll pump the water into the accumulator tank and pressurize it. So when you turn on the tap, it's not constantly coming on. The pump won't have to come on all the time. Or there's a, another pump that was recommended to me. It's a five-chamber pump. But it was up around $160 and just kind of out of my price range at that time. But uh, I'm happy with this one. Not too long ago I upgraded the under the sink plumbing and got rid of the P-trap and installed that white thing there. It's called a HEPVO valve and it's a waterless uh, trap. So it's already paid dividends because before I put the rig in storage and you know the in the P-trap the water would sort of evaporate or something and all of a sudden the, the tank smells would be in the rig when we came when we came to check on it but uh, this rig's been in storage a few weeks ago a few weeks now and I opened the the drain in the sink and no smell whatsoever so that's been a really good upgrade I like that one also part of the Renaults was this uh, nice shower head called the Fury RV from Oxygenics um, it's awesome. It has the regular um, popular Oxygenics flow, but it also has four other other uh, settings on it, different different sprays. So I really like that. But we were able to snap off the the um, holder. Actually, got a replacement here. Let's gonna install that right now. Um, you can see that U-shaped piece. Well, that piece broke in half. Not sure why. I know when Ann showers, she likes to uh, cut it and do whatever she does, and she twists it out of the way like that. And I think in the twisting action, she somehow cracked it. But I think what happened was the we were in quite a hard water area. I don't know if you can see little crystals build up. So a lot of you get this crystal stuff off. And I think it ran down and got kind of stuck in there, and the thing seized in place. So I'm gonna have to watch that with my. Uh, replacement the company was actually nice enough to send me out a replacement to uh, the one here you see is just one I bought out of Home Depot but it's not meant for it it was just temporary fix there we go good to go go tell Ann to move it like with this rather than grabbing it and kind of I think she kind of maybe twisted on it or something but I'll tell her try using that instead <laughs> We'll try to try to keep this from breaking this one, but I'm keeping this just in case as a spare. 
keeping with the plumbing theme, here is my uh, sewer hose. You can probably remember uh, it was only a month or so ago I built out this box. There's the Wastemaster. Comes out there. And so I had a chance to use that for about a year now. I'm really happy with it. It's a it's a tough hose for sure. I uh, like the head end, like the the switcher on it, stuff like that. I did find a few places where it was uh, you, you wouldn't believe some of the, the sewer hose, well I guess you, you would if you've been RVing a while, but some of the sewer hoses, sewer holes are small or they're elevated or they're, they're set down in something. So having the angled uh, a unit, there was a few tough ones, especially dump stations where they put that stupid uh, metal flip flap on there where you, you, know, you just get a little space to put your hose in. So I kind of got around it by, I, have, I carry a small small little section of hose so I just I just put that into the section of hose and I could and you can get away with those type of drains but overall I, I've been super pleased with that hose really good really top quality stuff the RV level or Revo leveler so this was kind of a neat gadget um, I didn't actually use it that much I'm pretty good at leveling the trailer I can see you know someone's just starting out it would be a real real handy addition but uh, sorry for the wind uh, recently I've got the the level mate pro which works through your uh, your cell phone or your tablet and it's more portable so I'm more excited about that because I'll be able to uh, when I'm trying to find level ground boondocking I'll be able to drive around and and see instantly what the the level of the trailers like so so I can't say this hasn't functioned as it as it should it's just not something I ended up using too much um, I'm I think I, I lean towards the the newer level mate pro but that's the way technology goes this one you know came out about a year ago so you, you give another year now they're into all these Bluetooth and smartphone systems are really popular and apps have taken off so I can't say this is is a bad unit but it's just not I think technology might be passing it by unless you don't want to use a smartphone or tablet type thing and, and this is the way you want to go then then this is works pretty good storage bay locks that's been a good upgrade uh, I think it was a couple of years ago at this same storage yard I did this install and uh, oops dropped the keys they've been a really good uh, really good upgrade now they're still nice and positive with that cylinder key it really never goes bad like the old ones did they were all worn out and cranky so yeah the little uh, dust covers they've worked great you know they keep everything desert dust out of there or rain or whatever so the locks are in good shape but the, the actual covers I'm not super impressed with the, the metal on them uh, they're starting to oxidize a bit and the, the hinge on there is getting a little, a little loose so I might have to put a little bit of a uh, grease on there but overall they've they've been a good a good addition at least uh, anybody with a what's a 751 key can open your storage base so when they open they look at mine they're going oh, okay maybe I'll move on to the next next rig <laughs> okay for the next one I have my camera stuck inside the fridge vent and I hope you can see that fan up there um, that's the one I installed to replace the the original OEM fan that was super noisy and it would also cycle on and off all the time and drive me crazy so I ended up finding a computer case fan much quieter great upgrade I never hear it and the fridge has the same cooling performance I guess in hindsight I would have installed two of these babies maybe just to get a little extra cooling so if I ever have the fridge out again I'm gonna I'm gonna put another one in there too trail air so the air ride hitch has been been really nice really happy with that uh, you can see the airbag there works great sure uh, sure takes up some of the shock especially when we're we're off-roading it head, heading to a boondocking site I feel uh, much better that uh, about it that I'm not going to be uh, cracking my uh, my fifth wheels frame or hurting my chuck suspension or hitch has a lot of dampening to it also I find it it tows quite nice I don't know what the difference is but I find in cornering and stuff like that it's a little smoother through the corners the rigs not really uh, tugging me as much so yeah that's a good one very happy with that uh, the major drawback to this has been has been uh, 
hitching and unhitching is a little different because of the airbag in there so the sweet spot for when I'm backing the truck in is a little different so especially if I'm on uneven ground it's it's just it's just a little bit of pain hitching compared to my old one uh, the other thing is this this thing weighs a lot I think it's about a hundred and 180 pounds or so whereas the old one was you know 45 or so so I'm giving up some weight capacity cargo capacity by uh, running this hitch but uh, or pin box I guess you call it uh, but uh, um, I think it's worth it just to, to protect the rig well up on the roof now I hope the the wind doesn't get too bad up here I gotta get one of those foamy things for my camera Anyway, there's my four Renegies. They've been terrific. I haven't really noticed any drop off. I've had uh, some of them for almost two of them for almost two years now, and I'm still they're still putting out five or six amps a piece. Um, the way I mounted them has proved very, to work out really well. Um, I haven't had any type of uh, loosening or anything like that. They've stayed solid. Um, so yeah, I'm like they're a good. Good panel for the price. They're coming in about $139 for 100 watts, so that's pretty good. They were easy to mount. They're lightweight. I think they're about 16, 16 uh, pounds each or so. Uh, one thing that that was kind of a drawback that I would like is a panel, or if Renogy can do it, is have the junction box on the back open easily, and so we can connect wires straight to the to some lugs back there, kind of like. The Next, let's go to uh, the Turnabon tape. You can see some of the vents here that I've done, and that's been great. I love that stuff. I haven't had to do any any repairs of cracked die core up here. Not really worried about leaks. That's going to last a good long time. I have a feeling I haven't had any signs of it lifting. Even when I didn't run a bead along the the side of it, like here, I just used it to hold down my. Uh, my solar wires and and it's been great stuck nice uh, another mod or upgrade I did was add two of these uh, they call it 360 siphon vents and supposedly they get rid of tank order tank od odors much better they get like a negative uh, pressure in them um, I hear there's a newer design that's even easy even easier to install than the ones I installed so that's a thumbs up for that and what else do we got up here? Oh, that's my fantastic fan, the vent I got for it. Cost a little more than the the normal vents, but uh, with that big grill back there, it moves a lot more air than the than the regular style uh, vent covers do. So yeah, I also like over here they have these uh, cotter pins. So you just pop off a few cotter pins and you. You have access to the vent versus kind of a stupid arrangement here on the regular vents where you have these bolts that hold them in place. Okay, let's get into the core of my boondocking system upgrades. First off, the, the battery bank here. Um, really happy with this box. I got it at a marine store. Um, there's a link to a company online that also has it. I'm not affiliated with them or anything. It's just they seem to be one of the only places you can get one of these uh, nice plastic boxes from. Um, inside are my four interstate batteries. Super happy with them. Uh, they're a good buy, you know, probably about $150 each, so they're not super expensive for the amount of power I get out of them. Uh, four, the, the four golf cart batteries, six volts have been great. Um, plenty of power for us. I think uh, that'll be enough power. I don't think I'll be upgrading these, you know, for five or seven years. Maybe I'm hoping by then that the, you know, the lighter weight lithium power packs will be down cheap and have all the bugs and wrinkles worked out of them. That'll that'll be my upgrade there. Let's go in the old inverter. So we have a 1,000 watt inverter. It was from Canadian Tire. That's what the Motor Master is. Um, yeah, the label's upside down. Some people drive some crazy when they see my label's upside down. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> and uh, in the States, this is, is badged under N Power. I guess N Power makes it in the, our Canadian Tire, which is a kind of like a super hardware automotive store up here in Canada. 
they badge it as theirs. Kind of like Sears would always have their own their own brand, but they never really made anything. So I'm happy with that thousand watts. I think we've had that over five years now. Um, it's always been been around to power my wife's iMac. Even when we're on shore power, I power it off this because I really like it's a true sine wave or pure sine wave. So it's very clean power. And it kind of makes, with it's coming off the batteries, it kind of makes for a little UPS. If the power goes out, then her computer doesn't crash. So she just keeps typing away and working away even when the campground power dies or a surge happens or whatever. Um, I guess the only thing is, uh, if I had anything negative about what I did, I might have went with less. Because uh, just with, with the amount of power we use, I could have gotten away with probably three, 400 watts, probably even a 300 watt. Because that's really all I need. I don't want to run any big, big power things. So, and so I'm losing a lot over the course of the day. If this is just idling, it's you know it draws an amp, amp, amp and a half. So I think what I might do is buy a really high quality little 300 watt thing and have two inverters and have one, you know that that gets used all the time. And I'll just keep this in case I want to run a power tool or some big high wattage. A lot of times I use the the shop vac to to vacuum up inside the rig so I like to have that. Okay moving on I'll go over here to a newer newer upgrade was the IntelliPower uh, converter charger and that was awesome it, it made a big difference when we're on a generator it, it helped charge the bank dramatically faster than, than the, the OEM model that's in the rig. Um, I decided to hang on to the OEM model and use it when we're on shore power um, I was kind of, the fan used to annoy me because it was always coming on to charge the batteries, but now that we have um, four or five hundred watts of solar, um, the batteries always are really charged by nighttime, so I never hear that fan anymore, so I'm going to, I'm going to on shore power just wear out that crappy uh, OEM one and keep this strictly as, this was about, I think these go for about 180 US, so they, they cost a little bit, so I'm going to kind of hang on to that and only use it when I'm using the generator. Uh, let's move up there. We got our my Bogart engineering solar charge controller. Really happy with that and that's you know mated with the the trimetric monitor. So let's go in and I'll show you that trimetric and talk a little bit about what I like about it. There we are. There's my trimetric. I have it mounted in the bathroom here. And I'm uh, super happy with that. You can get all sorts of information and and when it's mated with that Bogart controller um, I have all sorts of uh, custom settings I can go in and dial in just different charging profiles for the battery and get all kinds of information um, you know you can go and read the manual about it if you like but nothing really bad to say other than one thing I don't it's really not intuitive for setting it up you only have two buttons and a lot of things to set up so it's really you can tell it's it's designed by an engineer <laughs> um, I think it, this could really benefit from uh, this new technology with where you can control things with your cell phone through Bluetooth. If they had a, a Bluetooth setting and you could get, get a smart pad, smartphone uh, app to go in and set all these things and parameters and look at all your information, that, that, that would be great. That will probably be the next step. But, but you know, it's all about price. This is about $150. The controller is like $120. So. I think for me it was a really good bang for the buck. Um, I don't plan on really adding much more solar, so I think all this stuff is going to be uh, ideal for me. These are my rig's elephant feet. <laughs> so I was actually surprised uh, with these things. They're, a, they're a, a plastic foot and they replace the square metal jacks on your rig. And they turned out actually quite well. Um, I put them to the test, went through all sorts of different soils, sandy soils, rocky soils. I didn't try to baby them at all. We went boondocking a lot and I just dropped them down and, and they were strong. I thought maybe they would break up or, or fail, but they haven't. Uh, one thing that happened is these rubber uh, shoes they have on. There's a few times I went through and, uh, and dragged ground a bit and I actually threw a shoe, <laughs> peeled right off. but. It was easy to put back on. I guess it helps that the rubber flick, flicks off like that or else it might stick and you know snap the leg or bend the leg but uh, yeah I have two more at the back for my stabilizer jacks so it's nice when I when I go to say like a casino or something I can just drop my jacks and I'm not worrying about uh, 
hurting their concrete with metal on their pavement. Um, also, I get, I think it's three times the surface area or something. So they've been, they've been pretty good. Um, as sta the rig feels as, as stable as if, just like if I was, um, if I was using uh, blocks under there or whatever. Um, so it's, it kind of it saves me from having to pile a bunch of blocks up to get it stable. Um, I guess the drawback on them though is I think the price is up around $150. I think ideally they should be kind of somewhere under $100, maybe $75, $80 range would make them a lot more economical. I don't know if a lot of people would want to spend this much on, on these. Now we're at the back of the rig and one of my favorite upgrades is to uh, get rid of the old mouse hole that was here before. So before I installed this plug, um, there used to be a, what they call a mouse hole. My wife wasn't very happy when I called it that. And uh, you would just take all your cord and you would wind it up and push it in there and it would all fall in basically inside the end table. So I got rid of that when I was doing the reno because I needed the space and picked up a, a nice uh, plug. I think it was a plug and socket from a company called Marnico. And that's been great. Let's see that. No problems with bad connections or anything. It's rained like crazy, nice and waterproof, so really happy with that. And then rather than trying to force all that in, I can just wind it up nicely and uh, put it in my storage bay when we're not uh, not using it. So yeah, it's thumbs up. I can't think of anything anything bad to say about that one. Okay, well, I sort of blasted through all that, so <laughs> I didn't want the video to drag out too long. Anyway, if you want to go to loveyourrv.com, I've written a whole post on it with text and then links to, to all, all the things I discussed in there. If you want to see the original, if you missed it, the original install video and, and stuff like that. Or if you want links to where you can purchase it, you'll find, find that on the blog post, loveyourrv.com. I'll post it in, in the description as well. So, um, it won't be too long before we're back in our RV. Um, it was kind of sad. Uh, the reason we, we pulled out of the RV park was uh, Anne's mom was very ill. Um, she had kind of a terminal illness, so it was rough. She was 83, and, and eventually she succumbed not too long ago. So uh, we're going to kind of help her dad adjust and, uh, and stay here a month or so before hopefully we'll be, we'll be heading south. So it kind of interrupted our RVing, but, uh, but it's kind of nice to have the flexibility to go take care of loved ones in that situation. Um, anyway, I'm excited. I'm going to have some more uh, products to review. You know, thanks to all you guys watching me, um, companies are offering me uh, things to review, sending out free things, so that's always cool. Most of them, I'm half, and more than half, like 80% of them are stupid, and I don't want to review them. Or they're, you know, they're stuff that I'm not interested in. I like techie stuff and and uh, and uh, solar stuff and stuff like that. So um, anyway, I'm looking at getting pretty soon for review a uh, a thing to boost our wireless um, the Wi-Fi there's a Wi-Fi booster from a company called uh, uh, what's that popular one that makes antennas hmm. the Wine, Wine Guard, yeah the one that, that makes the antennas in the rig they, they're coming out it's not out yet but it's a it's a, a Wi-Fi booster for the rig so that's cool um, I have an old one called a Jeff Attack, but it's five years old now, and it's it's kind of finicky to set up. Um, and also, um, I used to have a, I did a review on the Sleek, the Wilson Sleek. So Wilson's contacted me, and they're going to send me out the latest, the latest system. So that's cool. I'm looking forward to that because we do a lot of boondocking in fringe areas. So it's the RV Truckers Edition. So it'll have a, a rooftop antenna, and hopefully it'll it'll help us stay connected when we're way off grid. And what's the final one? Oh, a guy wants to, a company wants to send me a wireless uh, back backup camera. So it sits on the dash and it's wireless to the back of the rig, which I don't know if it's as handy for backing up as actually seeing the tailgaters behind you and see what they're doing. So, <laughs> so I'm pretty excited to install those. And also, if you saw the previous video on the the sea level system, I I'm going to finish that off once I'm in the campground. But the the Garnett company actually saw the video and, and my blog post and saw the mistake I made with the senders and they actually offered nicely to send me out the actual short ones so that's cool so I'll install those and then I can get a really accurate re review for you so 
that's about it. Um, sorry the Beagle wasn't around. She's uh, on holidays at my sister's place with her, uh, with her dog cousins, but uh, she'll be back soon too. So until next time, Ray from Love Your RV, thanks for watching. Cheers.